what's good guys today we are breaking down charles Oliveira versus armin saryukian for ufc 300 armin saryukian ufc recap he faces off charles Oliveira at ufc 300 here's a thread that we're going to go over shout out to mixed martial arts you guys can give him a follow this guy is a beast thank you for letting me use your thread buddy without further ado intermission Boasting an extremely impressive resume, Armin's 8 and 2 UFC record in all actually should be 9 and 1, with only one clear loss of his professional career coming in his UFC debut against now lightweight champion Islam Mahachev. Armin has all the skills to be champion and he's only 27. Time is on his side. Win or lose at UFC 300, I expect him to fight for the belt one day. With a win over Charles Oliveira, Armin will secure a title fight. He rematches, uh, slash rematch against Islam Mahachev. Before the fabled event arrives, I figured there was no better time to present to recap Armin Saryukin's UFC career. So we're going to go over it right now. Armin Saryukin is a beast. Let's go over him against Islam Mahachev. We look at him. It says record of 13-2. and two. Mahachev proved, to m proved more adapt at winning positions and brought more energy for a three-round fight, resulting in a unanimous decision win over Saryukin. So, <clears throat> there's no shame in losing to Islam Mahashev, because Islam Mahashev, Islam Mahashev is the, one of the best, he's the lightweight champion right now, and especially if you have to fight him against your debut, good luck buddy, he did, he did really good against uh, Islam defending the takedowns in the first round, but as it goes towards the end, uh, Islam uh, takes over. And I'm not going to be able to show the whole clips because of copyright, but uh, we'll skim through these. And Islam's able to win by unanimous decision. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if it's 29-28 or 30-27, but he was able to win in pretty dominant fashion. Here we have Armin Saryukin's second fight against Oliveira Aubin Mercier, 14-2. Oliveira was eager to return to win in the column in front of a proud hometown crowd. However, his opponent, Armour Suyukin, had other ideas grinding Marisir into the canvas for a large proportion of the bout. So we look at this. <clears throat> you know, it gets Armin, gets Armin in his win. Armin starts winning now. And I believe Armin wins this by unanimous decision. Then we go to the next fight. We have July 18, 2020, Davy Ramos. With a record of 15-2, and two, Armin Saryukian made a statement at UFC Fight Island 2, dominating Davy Ramos en route to a unanimous decision win. So, <clears throat> we see Armin's more of a decision merchant. No finishing ability at all. But, he will be able to... And this guy, Aaron Broster, watches every single fight, bro. That guy is on Twitter all the time. Uh, Armin was able to dominate him and win by a boring decision, but he's able to establish himself in the UFC. Then we have Matt Frivola, who we know. We know Matt Frivola is a little bit of a beast right now. He's coming. <clears throat> he's supposed to fight Michael Johnson, but Michael Johnson uh, pulled out. January, I mean, he saved himself. January 23rd, 2021, with a record of 16-2, and so you can swept the scorecards with 30-27. So another boring decision, but... We have to pay attention to these decisions because it might end up in that same way on UFC 300. He might be able to hold Charles Oliveira down. And he's able to exchange in the grappling. Uh, he's able to grapple all 15 minutes hard. And I don't know if Oliveira can do that. But I'll show you guys uh, Oliveira thread at the end of this video, at the end of the segment. So we're going, we're uh, skimming by Armin Saryukin really fast to go over Oliveira. September 18, 2021, Cristiano Gagos, who we saw, Cristiano Gagos got, gets finished by everybody. Saryukin tears through Cristiano Gagos like a buzzsaw and receives his first career UFC finish. So of course, the first guy he's able to finish is the guy who's been knocked out six times. No surprise there. I mean, <clears throat> Christy Ogagos just got, like, finished last last weekend, I believe it was. I just want to see the finishing sequence, because Armin is that guy who just overwhelms you. Yeah, I remember this. Armin's that guy who can just overwhelm you. It's not actual, like, precision. It's just, let me overwhelm you with my power. But Armin is a technician. If we look at Armin, he's more of a grappler, but he's uh, more fundamentally sound than Oliveira. Uh, I I don't know if he's more well-rounded, but he can take the fight to different aspects and has gone five rounds. Oliveira hasn't gone five rounds ever. I think the longest he's went with was with Tony Ferguson, third round. But he doesn't look tired, Oliveira. Then Joel Alvarez, if you guys look at this, I'm just going to skim through just to avoid copyright. 
but um, he actually ends up leaving Joel Alvarez bloody within the first round because of his ground and pound. He's able to take Joel Alvarez down, and he's able to uh, slice him open with his with his elbows. Then we look at Oliver. I mean, then we look at Armin Saryukin versus Matus Gamarat. He lost by split decision, but this was a robbery. Matus Gamarat got dropped in this fight, and they didn't count it as a knockdown. The scrambles in this fight were insane, though. It's uh, something that I think uh, Saryukin is better than Oliveira in, is his uh, grappling scrambles. But, um, I don't know. I had it three rounds to two. Three rounds to two, uh, Gamarot. But, I mean, three, round, three rounds for Armin, two rounds for Gamarot. But uh, they, they screwed my boy over. December 17th, 2022, Damir Ismagulov. This was a prospect. I say this is by far one of his best wins other than Matus Gamarat because uh, Damir Ismagulov was a <clears throat> was a huge prospect on the come up. He just wrestles Damir Ismagulov till like a decision. He just wrestle fucks him. One thing about Armin, he's kind of fucking porn. And this is going to be like crazy because people are going to be like, oh, you're casual. Oh, but look at his fights, bro. This guy barely finishes anybody. And... I love Oliveira, bro. Joaquim Silva, style of make fights. Armin Saryukin faced a challenging style. If we skip to around 33, 38 seconds, Joaquim Silva landed 23 strikes. 23 strikes. And one of them was a strike that was devastating blow to drop Armin Saryukin. So one thing about Armin Saryukin is he's not as defensively sound as, you know, one would expect him to be. So he relies on his grappling. He was uh, getting a little too comfortable in the striking department, and that's what led him to get drop, uh, not drop, but st you know, stunned. But if he can get, look, look, look. I just want to go over this. If he can get wobbled by this, Oliveira's gonna hit you on the chin, bro. It didn't even hit. I mean, obviously, I would get knocked out or something. But bro, bro, Oliveira's more precise. But Armin Saryukin can take this fight to the ground and hold Oliveira for three rounds. I don't see no in between for this fight. It's either Oliveira's going to finish him or Armin Saryukin's going to win by a boring decision. Or finish him. So maybe... December, I think somebody gets finished this fight. December 2nd against Benil Darius. This was kind of sad because I wanted to see the grappling exchanges a little bit more. But when we see how it starts... You know, let me just rewind just a little bit. Benil starts kicking heavy. It... We didn't have a lot of time to see how Benil would do against Armin Saryukin in the grappling department. Because Armin Saryukin got a flash knockout. And I think that this will curse Armin Saryukin. Because he didn't get the chance to get more fight time. And understand like understand a little bit more of the... like He just got a fast finish. So sometimes it could be bad when you get a fast finish. Because you fall in love with your striking. And if he falls in love with his striking and tries to hang with Oliveira in the striking department, Oliveira's going to catch him. And he finishes Benio. <clears throat> and one thing about Armin is he's dirty. We have to admit Armin is dirty, bro. Look, Benio's out. One, two, three. And I know four. He wanted to hit him again. And I know you, your job is to do it until the referee takes you off. But you can tell, you know, how bad a person is depending on how... Like, how much punches they go after. You know what I'm saying? In conclusion, Armin Saryukin has been calling for an opportunity to face the top names lightweight division for quite some time, but no one has ever answered the call. After knocking out Benio Darius in just 104 minutes of the first round, Armin secured himself amongst the top five UFC lightweights in title elimination bout against division superstar number one ranked lightweight Charles Oliveira. Charles is good at one thing, taking his opponents back and choking him out that position, but overall... But overall... He has some tricks when pulling guard, but nothing extraordinary. He got a great back mount game where he chokes everybody out, but shouldn't let this happen in the fight. God damn, I cannot wait for this fight. I think Armin is underestimating him, but we're going to go over Charles Oliveira's finishes and almost every single one of his finishes. So we look against him against Clay Guida. Same thing to Dustin Poirier. Then we look right here, Charles Oliveira versus Nick Lentz. He's able to drop Nick Lentz off the kick. That's why sometimes... No, no, no. I don't know if... Oh, yeah, he did. That's why sometimes, remember in the yesterday's video, the guy said throwing same angle kicks can sometimes get you dropped. And we see that sequence time and time again. Joaquin Buckley against Chris Curtis. And I forgot the other one. Ode Osborne, I believe. This was crazy. 
This is when we started to get to Oliveira started to find his own. Then we have Charles Oliveira versus Chris for submission. He's a BJJ specialist. He's a finisher. He's a specialist. He's not a guy who's well-rounded and then just holds you on your back for 15 minutes without any ground and pound. Habib was relentless with his ground and pound. Oliveira was relentless with his submission attempts. And Islam Makhachev is uh, a finisher as well. But uh, I feel like Armistar Yukin isn't a finisher. If he wins, he wins by decision. Charles Oliveira versus Will Brooks. He's insane because Will Brooks was the favorite in this fight, I believe. And once that choke is in, bro, that choke is in. It doesn't even have to be under the chin. It could be right here. And he taps. He actually goes out, I think. Which is actually insane. And we look at the next clip. God damn, go out already, bro. W. All right, Charles Oliveira versus Hasi Hoki. And once that thing is in, bro, it's in. It's wrapped up. It's wraps for you, buddy. Night, night, or you tap. Charles Oliveira versus Jonathan Brokins. Just going to fast forward just a little bit. He's able to ground and pound, you know, get on top of him and do a front, front hard lock guillotine. And with submissions, you have to remember, you can't automatically go as hard as you want to right away you have to slowly like an anaconda you have to slowly get tighter and tighter and tighter 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 and then hold it so that's another thing when it comes to bjj specialists armin's more of a wrestler he trains at att with dustin no no no. he doesn't train at att but he's more of a he trains at american top team yes he does wait no he doesn't that's my two camera all right but I, wait i think they do yeah i think they do charles Oliveira. Armin Saryukin is not a BJJ specialist and not a finisher like this guy. We look at him against uh, Eric Wisely, and a lot of people are like, why are you bringing up these old fights? Like, like, look at that. He got a, a rolling knee bar. Like, bro, wh who's going to get that? Charles Oliveira versus Jared Gordon. Then this is when Charles Oliveira finds his, he finds his hands. He starts to find his hands. All right, Oliveira the beast. Then Oliveira versus Michael Chandler. He got the title off of Kevin Lee because uh, Habib, uh, the, Habib retired. So he got the title, and I don't think Habib would have retired. I don't think Habib should have retired. That's kind of like a coward move, um, in my opinion. Left hook. This is when he starts to fall in love with his grappling. I mean, with his uh, exchanges in the hands off the clinch. He's able to finish Michael Chandler, put the whole division on notice, and let the lightweight division know that the the lightweight division has a new champion, and the champion has a name, Charles Dubronx Oliveira. Then we look at this: Charles Oliveira versus Justin Gaethje. One thing about Oliveira is his collar tie. Armin Saryuki is shorter, so Oliveira's collar tie is there. And if Oliveira can collar tie against with Justin Gaethje, who's 5'11", and with Dustin Poirier, then uh, he's definitely going to be able to collar tie and looking for the collar tie against Armin Saryuki. He's able to throw a bunch of... You see his striking is uh, getting more fundamentally sound. His uppercuts are getting more clean, and his front kick is better. So when he lands that right over the top, Justin Gaethje said that, it felt like elect, like el like he got shocked by electricity, cause like he didn't even feel his tongue. He said his tongue was on fire. Let's just watch the sequence again. Boom, bro. God damn, bro. Who does that to Justin Gaethje, bro? Who's ever dropped Justin Gaethje like that? Nobody has ever dropped Justin Gaethje like that. I've seen Justin Gaethje dropped, wobbled, but I've never seen Justin Gaethje get shut out like that. Charles Oliveira versus Dustin Poirier. He's looking for the submission, and one thing about Oliveira is he can stay on your back. It could be a minute, two minutes, three minutes. He will stay on your back, looking for it, getting you tired, getting you tired, getting you tired, and then wrap that, wrap that submission up. It just goes to show how elite Oliveira is. Then we have Charles Oliveira versus Benil Daryush, his latest fight, his last fight. Oliveira thrives in mayhem he thrives in mayhem he will be he needs to start fast for this i texted my boy mamaron i texted him what do you think Oliveira needs to do in order to win this fight and he said this he said charles cannot fight on the back foot this is something recognized in the challenge fight and since then he has barely took a back step yes he can be walked into counters but he much prefers that than finding his back against the fence so yeah he needs to start fast can't let armin get him going backwards to scourge his shots with knees and kicks up the middle if his kicks are caught he could be in trouble for armin will be uh will also be in trouble for of getting his neck taken 
So that's something that he has to be careful of. Charles can defend takedowns fairly when he tries. He's just too content to go to the ground sometimes. Ideally, he'll defend the takedowns and use it and use it to get into his infamous collar ties where he'll rip Armin apart with elbows and knees inside, catch him standing tall. The break, also due to the height difference, I can definitely see KO via knee in the clinch from Charles. But once again, he said he needed to watch more clips from Armin. That's all I needed to hear, buddy. That's literally all I needed to hear. Bro. Guys, this was an amazing thread, guys. Watching Benio Darius get flatlined like that is a little bit sad because he deserved a title shot after nine wins. Like, how many more wins do you need to get a title shot? But it goes to show how elite Oliveira is. And then this is the last, last segment. I know this guy's such a hater, bro, Taylor Johnson. This is my favorite part of his. Bro, I can't wait to come back to this guy and tell him, what happened, bro? What happened to your boy Armin? No, I'm just kidding. But... If you guys enjoyed this thread, guys, let me know what you guys think. I got one little quick edit that you guys will like, but uh, drop a like. Let me know if you guys want me to do a breakdown on uh, Jim Miller versus Bobby Green or uh, what's that other fight? Um, the co-main event, Yang Shan Nam versus Yang Wei Li or Alexander Rockix versus Yuri Prohoshka. We can look for threads on that, and there's threads all over Twitter, so we have all day. I'm going to be flooding a bunch of content this whole week, so... Uh, Guys, hit the like, guys. Hit the fucking like button. And hit the bell so you never miss a video. And also, thank you for watching, bro. Let's end this off with a great threat. With a great uh, edit. It took just 24 hours for us to lose control of the city. Tonight, Gotham's relying on one man to save us all. Hey, that was awesome. All right, see y'all in the next one. W video. Peace.